Prime Minister uh, Starmer expected to lay out his budget plan next month. He's pledged to not increase income or corporate taxes. I asked him, though, about how he thinks about a wealth tax. Tax has to be fair, and as a broad proposition, um, those that have got broader shoulders, you know, do uh, understandably and rightly bear a bigger burden of the tax share. But we've got to make sure that we don't inhibit economic growth um, in the taxes that we put in place. And so that is important in the balance. And what the businesses and investors here were saying to me this morning is that is this opportunity. Obviously, tax is important in relation to that, but they want to see the other issues right. up alongside it. And the other issues are the regulatory environment. You yeah. have an alphabet soup of regulatory agencies, and a lot of people look at that and say it's just it's, it's too much of a burden. Is there something that you're going to do? Yes, and it's very important um, because I have with my discussions with businesses said, tell me the inhibitors mm. of investment over and above the instability that we've touched on. And they say to me, planning, it takes too long to build things in the United Kingdom, so we're reforming the planning rules. We've already started on that. They say that the national grid, the way we move energy around the country, is too slow, so we're going to fix that. But they also say, in relation to regulation, that there's too much inconsistency. There's too many agencies that are regulating, and they're not aligned. Um, and we will get to grips with that. This is from Oxford Ec uh, Economics. They say that almost two-thirds of wealthy investors said they plan to leave the UK within two years or shortly if the Labour government moves ahead with plans to get rid of the non-domiciled tax concessions. 67% said they would not have emigrated to Britain in the first place if this were to take place. How should you, we think about that? Well, we quite often read these stories and then you dig under them and they're not quite as alarming as they first seem. Um, we will get the balance right, but we are going to change the rules on non-DOMs because we have to make sure that we've got the tax yield available to take the steps that we need in relation to our public services. So we will take these steps. We will take them in a calculated, careful, balanced way but I think some of these stories, um, there are always alarmist stories about right. what people will do. Sometimes a pinch of salt helps when looking at those stories. And guys, the, the story of, the, of growth versus labor uh, and, uh, and workers, if you will, uh, came to a, uh, a head in a way this week because earlier this week there was a symbolic vote in the UK. Starmer's Labor Party rejected his plan to cut payments that offset winter fuel costs for pensioners. Uh, and that has raised some all sorts of new questions about uh, what this policy and program will mean. He, I asked him about how the business community should think about the resistance from inside his own party. We inherited an economy which was badly damaged in the UK because of the chopping and changing and the bad decisions of the last government. We then audited the books when we came in and found that £22 billion was unaccounted for mm -hmm. in year. Uh, and therefore, we took the decision to um, address that this year, not to ignore it, not to walk past it, but to address it. But the purpose in addressing it um, is to stabilise the economy. And so everything that we are doing, right. when I say wealth creation, economic growth is our number one priority, that means every decision is taken against that yardstick. Does it help economic growth? My strong view is that economic stability is the foundation for economic growth, and therefore we will stabilise the economy. That means tough decisions. Nobody wants to deal, nobody wants to change the winter fuel right. allowance for pensioners, but by doing that we stabilise the economy. For pensioners it means that we can commit to what we call the triple lock, which means that they get uh, more money year on year, but I think for investors, to point of your question, what they can see is a government that's prepared to do the tough decisions to stabilise the economy.